Thank you. The Honourable Member for Innisfil, Silver Lake, followed by Strathcona Sherwood Park. Mr. Speaker, once again, Albertans have a reason not to trust this PC government. Alberta Health Services delivers another budget that doesn't meet with the priorities of Albertans. In the 2013-2014 budget document submitted to the Health Minister for his approval, Alberta Health Services cuts long-term care funding to vulnerable seniors by $52 million. Yet somehow, Super Board executives were able to find $84 million more for administration and possible pay hikes. Albertans are not applauding AHS, they're disgusted. To the Health Minister, how can you possibly explain how cutting funding by $52 million will improve the quality of... Thank you, Honourable Member. Honourable Minister of Health. Well, Mr. Speaker, as I, plead, as I explained in answer to a previous question, Alberta Health Services is increasing funding in all areas of continuing care. That's long-term care, that's home care... Uh, Mr. Speaker, and that's other care in the community. Mr. Speaker, with respect to administration costs, as I explained earlier, AHS has changed how they categorize those costs. Uh, additional programs which previously had not been included in that line, like strategic clinical networks, have now been added. And that, Mr. Speaker, will make our administrative expenses directly comparable to those in other provinces and territories. Maybe there's a second set of books that we're not aware of. Given that this health minister has already devastated communities and families with the closures of the Little Bow Continuing Care Centre and Michener Centre in Red Deer, can the health minister assure Albertans in this House that the $52 million cut to long-term care in this year's Alberta Health Services budget won't mean additional facility closures this year, next year, or ever? Well, Mr. Speaker, the uh, Honourable Member seems to be, and her colleagues they always seem to be very interested in attributing motive. Mr. Speaker, when it comes to motive, this government has one aim in mind when it comes to seniors, and that is allowing our seniors to live independently and with dignity and for as long as possible in their home community. Mr. Speaker, a commitment to add 5,000 beds over five years and to be on track to deliver that is not uh, a small commitment. We've done that, Mr. Speaker. We're continuing to open new spaces. As I said earlier, about 15 per cent of Albertans who require continuing care are awaiting a long-term care bed, and they will be provided for them. Thank you. There's definitely motive here, absolutely. Given that the families of vulnerable residents in Little Bow and Michener Centre were completely blindsided by the government's closure of these two very important care facilities, will the minister be honest with Albertans and tell them which other facilities are on the chopping block so families can at least prepare? Well, Mr. Speaker, what would be honest would be uh, uh, when, you're, when you're standing up in this House claiming to demand better value for taxpayers' dollars, and you see initiatives placed in front of you which deliver exactly that in an area as important as health care, is to admit that, Mr. Speaker. And resource allocation decisions in health care are often complicated, and they do often affect communities in the name of delivering a higher quality of service to a broader number of Albertans. Mr. Speaker, they can't have their cake and eat it too. They can't claim to be on the side of tax taxpayers and, and on the basis of no evidence whatsoever continue to undermine public confidence in this system.